I can't find the notes. You can't. I know you just sent me an email. I literally I'll just sent you an email. Update. My internet is. I see it now. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I save this? <laughs> I promise. I R is smart. All right, I'm gonna get started. <laughs> Wrong song, that's the old song. Welcome to Run With Purpose. This is episode number 89. And for those of you that are new to the show, my name is Flores, and I'm so very glad that you found this podcast. Would love if you would subscribe. As always, you can reach out to me on all of the socials at flores.run. Hope everyone is having a great week uh, so far. Um, today's guest, you know her. You've seen her a few times before. I'm excited to have Caitlin back on the show. We've had some amazing discussions uh we realized it's been two years. When I did my like yearly recap, I realized she wasn't on the show last year, and I instantly texted her and said, "We are changing that." So, Caitlin, thanks for being on the show again. Yes, thanks for having me. I also forgot. I feel like time just kind of disappeared. <laughs> it's it's weird how these last few years, time is just like a weird social construct that no one really knows where it goes or what we did with it. Yeah, and I am ready to jump into that full force now that I'm working for myself and not working, driving. I was still driving to work all the time. So it was, you know, it was like infuriating. You're like driving, you're like, everyone else is at home. No. <laughs> we thought that when we were in Florida, we're like, we were at the beach. You know, it's Christmas time or whatever. And people are uh, like, the beach was busy. And we're all like, don't you guys have families to hang out with? We're like, oh, wait, we're, we're doing the same thing. <laughs> Well, so you do with your family. You don't want to be stuck in the house that you've been stuck in for this past two years. <laughs> That's fair. We just left. You know, we just went to Florida and didn't say like, oh, well, we're, we're not here. Sorry, guys. So, um, but yeah, today we're going to have, uh, we're going to, we're going to talk about loyalty. Very interesting topic, uh, that, that Caitlin had brought up and I was like, yeah, let's talk about this. I think it'd be good. We have, we hear all the time of this, like, where do your loyalties lie? And, how we can have like weird loyalties and stuff like that. And this concept can be found in like all sorts of literature and film shows, everyday life. We we hear that, that, uh, that phrase really of like where our loyalties lies and where are we putting our loyalties? Why are we doing that? And really to understand what loyalty is and kind of to dive into this, I really wanted to go back to, to like a definition of what loyalty was. And of course, like loyalty is like the act of being loyal. So like, okay, thanks dictionary.com. Let's go one layer deeper uh and dictionary.com uh says that loyal is characterized by or showing faithfulness to commitment vows allegiance obligations etc uh i think caitlin sent over a better definition kind of a better explanation for it so i'll let you kind of start us off there so my definition is obviously on the other notes (laughs) It's on the other notepad. We are super organized today, guys. Thanks so much for listening. I... <laughs> One second, please. I promise I'll get it. And I'm glad that you know how to edit because this is just not good. <laughs> oh, I'm not editing any of this out. So this is all. <laughs> oh, perfect. This is real talk. This we'll is... just leave this in there. <laughs> okay. Nope. Those are the notes that you send me again. I have them pulled yeah. up as well. If you would like me to share your data, I'm just that would be great. Considering, <laughs> yes, so please. maybe maybe those will kind of spark your mind with the two because we don't have to necessarily read off the notes. Obviously, we're trying to read. Folks that are listening, we're reading off the notes to make sure we don't miss anything, especially with the definition. But this idea, I got it. Okay, you got it up. Go. <laughs> yes. So it's a strong feeling of support or allegiance, fidelity. Uh, Fidelity is faithfulness to a person, cause, or belief demonstrated by continuing loyalty and support. So uh, I personally am not a big fan of obedience and adherence uh, as synonyms for loyalty. 
But I mean, I certainly suppose that they are symptoms of being loyal. I don't know that I would call those, you know, you know, like not exactly the same thing. Yeah. But I think, well, I think when you see, when you see obedience, it can, it has probably similar things to loyalty, but I don't think, I don't think being obedient necessarily means you're loyal in, well, maybe it does, but just not necessarily in a positive sense, right? You can be obedient yeah. and not be positive. I guess Stockholm syndrome, <laughs> would that be loyalty or, you know, like what? what? <laughs> right. But it's the same. It's the same. Necessarily. Technically, I, th- I think we have, we have this positive vibe of loyalty, right? Like it's a good thing. Like my dog mm-hmm. is loyal mm-hmm. to me. I'm loyal to whatever the case might be. Oh but, yeah. We attach it to morality. Yeah. Right. We, we have this like positivity thing to it. And, and you had put in your, uh, our communication back forth, this idea of like not confusing it with like trust or morality because it isn't the same thing. Right. Yes. There's, I mean, to be loyal to something, it doesn't have to be, you know, neither side has to be trustworthy and neither side has to be very moral. Uh, there are definitely loyalties that even I have. I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm like Al Capone over here, like loyal to the mob, but I'm definitely. I wouldn't say that <laughs> because they loyal. wouldn't like me to say that. Right. Exactly. Um, but I also, I mean, I've got some like brand loyalty that I'm not exceptionally proud of, but <laughs> you know, but they, <laughs> Uh, yeah, like Nike, I'd say would be a good example. Granted, I'm not a, I do not support Nike, particularly thrift store Nike. Then yes, but uh, no, like that's a, a brand loyalty that a lot of people have, a ton of people have, and kind of if you look behind the scenes, you're kind of like, I don't want to know about that. <laughs> right, and that, um, and that but goes, it's a huge popularity. Yeah, and I think that's where we we can kind of get into that weird thing of like, when you say where your loyalties lie, it can be in a, a fun thing, like a sports team, or we talked about right before we started recording, like Pepsi versus Coke. Like you have a thing, you know, I grew up in North Carolina and when you went to this, went to, went out, you're like, I want a Coke. And they said, what kind of Coke? And you said a Sprite. And you're like, that makes no sense at all. Coca-Cola is its own product. I don't, I don't understand your concept regardless, but we have these like fun loyalties, but then we can, we can kind of spin it in another way, like you just said, with with Nike or some of maybe other companies that might have shady behind the scenes things, is the difference kind of between loyalty and trustworthiness is loyalty, you have you're loyal because of more than likely external factors of something you can see. I like the way these shoes look. I like the way these shoes feel. Sorry, Nike, we're picking on you today because she brought it up and that's what we're gonna do. Done. I'm that, that sue me. No, please not though. Please. That's I said that to the wrong person. Shit. Um We're gonna be dead real soon. Okay. <laughs> real soon. Yeah. You called out the mob and I'm calling out Nike. They're basically the same thing. Again, just kidding, guys. It's all a joke. <laughs> no, the government. Here we go. It's a joke. We're just kidding. They're all the same. No. <laughs> <laughs> but we have this we can get behind these things that are we can be more loyal things and not really worry about the behind the scenes. And it's really just like this external factor of the way things look, the way things feel, the way it makes us feel almost where we can kind of feel loyal. And then you, you confuse that trustworthiness or even truth in that matter with loyalty because your loyalty doesn't necessarily have to mean it's true. Oh, absolutely not. Loyalty is just, sticking behind whatever it is i mean it's, it seems like it's either you know it's kind of like a circle you're either motivated by your beliefs or your loyalties to certain things will then influence your beliefs you know uh like the coke versus pepsi if you're going to go to the store you're not going to buy a pepsi you're going to buy a coke um so it is it's a can be a vicious cycle sometimes i mean it's and it's weird how Beliefs will influence loyalties and everybody has very, very different loyalties and truths and all of those types of things. It makes everybody different. And it also, I think, recently has made everybody kind of very suspicious of each other. Like everybody's very aware that 
you know, how untrustworthy we all are. And we kind of, instead of just knowing that about each other and just being like, well, you know, and you're loyal to things in spite of the kind of bad things that you know about people, or you're just, what we're doing now is cutting them out and being a bit hypocritical and not taking a look in the mirror and loving people and being loyal in spite of some of the downfalls that maybe we don't think are very attractive or that society has deemed not appropriate um, or the things that we've gotten away with that other people have gotten caught for. I mean, most people have driven drunk, right? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know why you're looking at me. <laughs> and I mean, most people go without being caught, but there's those people <laughs> too. It's it's interesting you say too about like the beliefs and almost kind of what we're dealing with in society right now. This idea of we're loyal to labels, like how we label ourselves and how we label people. And and if because someone believes one thing, we all of a sudden assume they believe other things and and then start to assume people have loyalties to other things. Right now it is just crazy just like the political climate and just cultural climate we have in the u.s really just how this Mm -hmm. is but then if you look at it from a a worldly view you know when we went to australia a few years ago and we're talking to people like it's a very obvious we're americans just the way we talk when we're over there but like having conversations people with people about it like oh wait we we are we are crazy we are losing our damn minds in this country because we we label people and we do all these things they have their own stuff too with like the aborigines and and the the indigenous people but we we don't see it as much because it's like no like i i have my identity and how i label myself if you will and i usually associate myself with people that think similar to me that's just how we work like, you know, I don't want, if we were completely different, which obviously we're different in some things, cause that's, but we're, we're able to have that conversation, but most, more often than not, if we're completely different and we can't have anything to relate to, we wouldn't be having this conversation now. It just, this communication just wouldn't happen because there's a wall that we put up because no, I'm loyal to this side. I'm hard on my beliefs and I'm not even going to listen to you regardless if you're right, wrong, or indifferent. I think you don't, you're completely off base and I'm just not going to listen to you. And I think that's when you kind of get to the point, hi puppy, that's when you get to the point (laughs) of your idea of not just loving people and kind of just closing off the doors. And so it's like, it hasn't been involved out of us yet. I mean, that was, it used to be a little bit of a, obviously a defense mechanism, if you will. I mean, you know, you stayed within your tribe and if another somebody else came over, you were like, what are you doing here? You weren't like, hey, would you like some food? You know, like it was back then it was kind of like, well, we don't have enough food for you. Like, what do you want? It it was, a, you know, you had loyalty to the people who were in your circle that were around you, that looked like you, that you recognized. And then we've kind of developed from there. And now we're entering into a world where... you would think that we would have a lot more loyalty to each other as a whole, where what it seems like now is we've actually put a lot more loyalty into things Mm. instead of each other. Like we've been given the opportunity to be more loyal and trusting of people, especially in spite of, you know, in light of all of these great inventions like technology and access to things and all that kind of stuff. But, it seems like we're kind of going the other way where our loyalties are to stuff. We are really like, really like stuff. We really like money. Mm -hmm. I would, the loyalty to money has become, I mean, you, you see it in, in music in movies and in everything. There's no doubt about the subculture of, Americans and I maybe the world, I don't know, uh, the loyalty to money, which is depressing. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting concept too, because we've, we've kind of seen things go through shifts. And I know we talked about before, but like personally of going from the big house to an apartment to like, Hey, I don't need more things. I don't need more stuff to kind of be happy. <clears throat> but even then, like we have that subculture of minimalism and that kind of thought. To your point, though, it's, it's, it's still very much a money game. It's how hard can you hustle? 
what can you do to kind of get above everyone else? And you know, this kind of working for yourself now, it's like you, you, you have to play the game in order to continue, mm-hmm. but then it, but then it never it pans out. You, you work too hard and then you're like, well, if I only got this, then I'd have more. So you know, I need, I need to work harder so I can get this. And it's the never ending circle, but that's just how things are set up now. And not, I'm not saying that you're going after money. <clears throat> you obviously need money to pay bills. We all do. But it's this idea of accumulating wealth, accumulating things to kind of fulfill myself. Like the money is what's going to fulfill me. And like, spoiler alert, guys, it's not. The more money you make, you're just going to want more money, more problems. All problems. Yeah, exactly. And you're right. <laughs> great. I, I'm not going to lie. I walked away from a job where I was making more money than I'd ever made. I was working from home. Well, no, I was laid off. They didn't have enough work for me. So, and this is now, so this is it's very interesting. Uh, I had a job before I left for that other job, except I was driving every day and it took me 30 minutes to get to work. So this job offered more money, amazing technology, and I got to work from home. And so then I get there and I didn't have an attorney to get assigned to. I didn't have enough cases. They didn't have enough work for me. And then they ended up letting me go because they didn't have enough work for me to do. And it's like, okay, not being in this position again. You know, I'm finally going to be loyal to myself and also to the clients because I'm not, I'm not going to unethically bill. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that I did something that I didn't do. I'm not going to bill for more hours than it actually took me. I'm not going to do it. I'm just, and I kind of drew my line in the sand and it was like, you know, I, you're going to have to fire me or well, let me go. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to just quit because you're, you are telling me that I need to come up with hours. No, I'm going to be loyal to myself and the belief system that I have, which is not to be unethical. So I think I jumped off the bridge and <laughs> say, la vie. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. <clears throat> yeah. This, um, this idea of being loyal to yourself. I think that's an interesting concept, right? Like we have this idea of being loyal to brands and stuff like that. But sometimes if you say you're loyal to yourself, it can almost seem like you're self-centered. You're only worried about yourself. And that's not, that's not saying the same thing, right? We're saying that I'm being loyal to myself. It's I'm, I'm believing my beliefs. I'm living my beliefs, my, my morals, my, my passions, whatever the case might be. And you're, you're accepting that you are just as important as somebody else. And I think that's where a lot of people kind of get that confusion between like self-centeredness and just like, no, just being authentic. Well, yeah, I, a good way, I guess, to <laughs> describe that in my brain is the, you have to fill your own cup up. Otherwise you're no good to anybody else. Um, you know, if you're not taking care of yourself and doing what you need to do, you're going to, you know, you're going to give bad advice. You're going to not be the friend that you want to be. You're not going to be open to listen. You're not going to be supportive. You're not going to be helpful. You're not going to be open to new opportunity. You know, you really, you, I've learned this, you know, I did this fun thing where I wouldn't eat when I would get overwhelmed. That was fun. (laughs) And, and then, and then, and then, you know, and then I obviously my, my brain fog and like, it made me not feel good. And then I got anxiety and it just like, it created this circle that I, you know, you had to get yourself out of and I wasn't doing anybody any good by perpetuating that cycle. And so I had to put some measures in and set some alarms and actually start taking steps to make sure that sounds ridiculous as an adult, but I had to make steps to make sure that, you know, cause you sit there throughout the day in legal and you're just going, you know, especially if you work at a fast firm, I mean, you're just moving. Um, I had an attorney that never went, like never used the restroom kind of thing. So like you just, there's a societal pressure within a firm to be at your desk more than anybody else Mm. and to be working. So you, your loyalty falls from being yourself to being for this firm that doesn't have any loyalty to you. Right. And then then we kind of go into that. We go back to our obedience, right? We go back to those other synonyms for it because that becomes a thing is it's in theory, it's loyalty because you aren't doing it to yourself. You're being loyal to their cause. You're being obedient to their cause. But where is that getting you, right? Like you said, you're 
you're having issues with your mind, not being able to clear, uh, think clearly You because you're not eating. You're not doing these things because your loyalty is to someone else's goal and purpose and passion instead of really focusing on yours, which as an employee, like I, I obviously run my own businesses that I have, but I'm also an employee of a company. But I love where I work because I don't feel like I feel like it's aligning with what I want to do. I go to work every day and I absolutely love it. Um, one, I get to record podcasts, so that's cool too. Uh, if, if anyone from my work is listening, uh, it's a weekend, everyone. It's not a weekend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, we we do this loyalty, uh, this like obedience in them. What was the other word? Adherence was the other one. I was like, what's the other synonym? Like this, like you, oh, yeah, you're it's true. You're following in line as you should, mm-hmm. based off of said mm-hmm. rules. Which again. If it aligns with you and it's helping, it's also aligning with your beliefs, your morals, your, your drive, then that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. We all have to work. We all have to have money to pay bills, to put food on the table, to do this kind of thing. But when we start misguiding that loyalty and not actually aligning it with ours, that's when the disconnect becomes a real problem. Well, yeah, if you don't have strong loyalties to something, you will be loyal to anything. You know, mm. what is that? They say that, you know, what's the, oh, it's a little bit more religious version. You know what I'm talking about? Um, like, is it, maybe I'm confusing it. Cause what I'm thinking of is like better to stand on your stand up for something than it is to die on your knees or something along those lines. I don't know. We'll find it. We'll find it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I, and, and that's the other thing when, when I had no loyalties to myself, you know, goals of drinking water and eating right and working out and doing X, Y, and Z and reading and trying to build these things, you become susceptible to being loyal to someone else's goal, whether that is good for you or not. And I think it's really hard to get out of those kind of what what should we call those? We should come up with a name for the the loyalties that you fall into, mm. and then you're like, ah, crap. Like, what mm. what would be a good complacent loyalties? I don't know. I mean, that could be complacent's a good word for it because it's just you're kind of you're not in control of it, right? It's just you're just like, eh, yeah, it is what it is. So, I mean, complacent I think fits because to your same to your point, it's. If we're not loyal to something, like we are all loyal to something, whether you realize it or not, because you know, if, you, usually, yeah. if you, if you think about this, where do you spend your time every day? Where do you spend your money? You make conscious decisions, some subconscious decisions about where you go for lunch, about the things mm-hmm. you do, who mm-hmm. you talk to, who you hang out with. So you have loyalties. But about the thoughts you let into your mind. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't process those and really listen to yourself in what those are, you're never going to be able to find out what those are, which can obviously just lead to like discontentment and that sort of thing of like, I don't feel fulfilled. Like I'm, I feel like I'm on the wrong path. What's going on? I'm reading a book now. Um, I can't pronounce the name of it because the title's in Japanese. It's like some Japanese word, but it's the whole idea of like uh, living your life with purpose, like doing your passion purpose thing or whatever obviously run with purpose. I found it interesting. But this whole concept of like this specific group of people that they um, interviewed, I think it was in Okinawa, like they have the, the highest percentage of population over that lives over a hundred years old. And they're like, why? And it's like, oh, because they all know what their purpose is. They're all driving towards something. So it's the same thing as they know where their loyalties are. They know the thoughts that are going in their heads and why they're having them. And then they know how to use those to, to continue their life and continue their family, continue their work, whatever the case might be. Mm-hmm. Make things better. Like people that once they fill their cup, they're able to extend the excess to kind of slosh all over everybody else. And uh, I, that's exactly the case. Like when you're building loyalties to yourself, don't have to be a bad thing. Um, I mean, obviously, and that's the thing. I think, I think even, you know, when people think of it as being vain, I think they're confusing loyalty of self with things like loyalty to money. Mm. You know, those people that you usually think of as being vain or, you know, greedy and that type of thing. So it's not that they're loyal to themselves even, they're loyal to something else, which makes them come off as that way. 
um, you know, when you're loyal to yourself, I think that, that you, it's almost uh, kind of like faith, you know, it's a demeanor. It's a way that you walk around. It's a way that you interact with other people. It's a way that you um, put yourself out there. I mean, even in high school, you know, when a friend was talking behind the friend's back, were you the friend that went along with the friend that was talking crap or were you the friend that stood up for your friend that was being talked about? You know, it was, and which one made you feel better? Right. <laughs> it's the interesting thing. Um, or were you the friend that gave your phone number on hundred dollar bills of monopoly money? Allegedly. Well, that was not me. I know. We're just, we're just saying alleged names. That's a legend thing. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, that's funny. Uh, throwback. No one, no one is going to get that joke. Um, literally no one. That's okay though. Uh, but yeah, this, I think what you said was like super important there of the, how we can confuse loyalty to self with these other things. But it's like, no, it's because our loyalty actually is in the money. It's in the things it's in the success that that's where our loyalty lies. So it comes off. You're like, Oh, I'm helping me. It's like, no, you're loyal to this. You're loyal to the career path. You're loyal to that thing, which is then why it comes off as condescending and self-serving. Whereas to your point of, are you the person that's willing to, to lend the hand, to help out, to be the person to listen to or the shoulder to cry on kind of thing, not to get sappy with it, but that kind of idea of, are you there? Are you being what you believe is your best self? And, you, and no matter the situation that comes up, are you continuously being truthful to yourself? And that's probably where the truth will come in as far as loyalty to yourself. Um, Cause I think that's the, that's the tough piece is when, something comes up we don't agree with, are we taking a stand? Or is our loyalty in being accepted? So we yes, then take a step exactly. back because we don't want to kind of stand out. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of the, what, the era of the loyalty to stuff and not to people or you know, necessarily causes anymore. Um, sometimes people are loyal to the causes. There's, you know, some of that, but there's also a lot of people who join the cause who ruin it for everyone else because they're loyal to, you know, getting what they want out of it right. instead of bettering the cause. And we've all become pretty self-interested and very loyal to yeah like we talked about loyal to stuff not loyal to the betterment of each other to working together on projects to even being nice to each other when we drive down the road i mean <laughs> um it's gotten pretty pretty intense <laughs> yeah i'm so glad i don't have to drive anymore we were talking about it just before we started recording uh kayla and i were we, since we've been back from florida Kayla has not left the house other than to walk the dog. And we've been back for mm -hmm. nine days uh, because we have nowhere to go. We have no do. So I'm like, yeah, perfect. I don't want to drive because that's, that's ridiculous. Um, Cause people are crazy. Um, it's not what I was going to talk about, but then that just came in my head. So that's what I said. Um, this idea though, uh, where was I going? I, I had a point that I was going to make and then I forgot it. Uh Horrible, well, po horrible podcasting. Um, if you are interested, I will have a segue. <laughs> um, do it. I do. I think that people also need to be aware that, you know, changing your loyalties isn't a bad thing either. As you start to grow and change and you become, as you learn more, you, you don't have to, I don't think people should feel so guilty to things that they were loyal to previously, you know, especially things like uh, addictions, you know, that's a loyalty that you had and it's not anymore. It's, it was a, you were then loyal to that habit and now you're loyal to yourself and knowing how to shed those habits and walk away from things that aren't good for you. Um, you know, a little bit more funny one is I had used that, that hair product, <laughs> um, and there have been lawsuits about this, actually. So I used this hair product, which shall not be named, but I'm sure you can figure it out. It's a network marketing type of hair product. And my hair started to fall out. And at an alarming rate, like, like lots of it. 
And I went to the lady and I was like, my hair is falling out. She's like, oh, it's just shedding all of the bad stuff. You've used such bad products for so long that like, this is just a part of the natural process. And I was like, okay. (laughs) So out of sheer stupidity and loyalty to not wanting to hurt her feelings and wanting to continue to use this product, I did it until my hairstylist was like, for the love of God, woman. (laughs) <laughs> please stop doing who this. says that yeah she said she said who says that who says that your hair falling out is a natural thing <laughs> so um yes switch my loyalty and obviously i'm very happy with that choice <laughs> um, took a very long time to <clears throat> to correct that decision of not being loyal to myself um also got tmj from not stretching and uh, having really bad anxiety to the point where I couldn't open my mouth. So I started doing yoga to help that and a lot of, you know, like wearing toe spacers and doing lots of exercises. And now, you know, I'm able to sing again. Chewing doesn't hurt. It's like once you start to, because you feel so bad about yourself when your loyalties are on other things, mm-hmm. on, on, making money or finding someone even or things like that. Like once you switch towards yourself, open yourself up for your blessings, maybe the right way to put it. Yeah. I think, well, I think when you, when you start doing that, it goes back to what I said before is you're kind of putting yourself on the same playing field as someone else, right? Your loyalty, you're just now as important as whatever else you're doing. And when you, when you have that like self-realization of like, Oh no, I'm worth something. My opinion is worth something. My actions are worth something. Then it's not, I don't think you're even opening up for blessings to happen. You're just now seeing the blessings that are there, right? I think there's a lot of cases where like they're already there, but we've got our blinders on because it's like, this is the way, this is what I have to do. This is what needs to happen. And you don't, you don't open yourself up. You make yourself available for it because you're so narrow-minded in it. It's just like, hey, take a step back. Like, no, I, I am worth it. I can do these things. You know, I, you put a note here talking about like gangster rap. It's like, yeah, we used to, we used to all listen to that kind of music where it was just like, wait a second, that, that may not ap- align with, with my morals and values and that sort of thing. So I'm just not going to do it. it. Period. Even though I like it. Okay. <laughs> You used to love it, okay? You would be rolling around with those subs so loud, bumping, absolutely bumping. Uh, Some like <laughs> oh, high school hardcore like rap music, like not on the radio rap music type thing. Yeah. Like maybe on the radio in West Palm Beach. They didn't. They didn't have. And I don't think the FCC managed so half of our stuff. That's how it is. Spawny smooth. Oh, I need to find that. Make that the outro song. I don't think he's still relevant. No one's gonna sue me. Oh yes, he is. Because I'm from five sticks one. Um, I believe he is still around, actually, and doing quite well still in the West Palm scene. Um, <laughs> if you keep yelling the area code where you're from, I think maybe that's what it works. Also, when your name is Smooth I mean, Smooth, it does help. But it's smooth in Spanish. Well. That's the hence Which reason. Which is funny because Beach. he is black, so he not Hispanic and uses suave. But I do like it. Suave Smooth is a great name. It really is. I just I, his voice is confusing. It's very much so. He sounds like a very a toddler. It squeals a bit. Right? And that's a man who is loyal to his area code. Like he is loyal to Palm Beach. He doesn't want to be a part of like California stuff. He doesn't want to be a part of Fort Lauderdale stuff. Tampa. No. West Palm Palm, is where it's at for him. We just lost half the people listening. They're like, they're like, I need to Google the Suave Smooth guy. Spotify folks, not a sponsor of the podcast, but check them out. Uh, You can, you can see all the fun stuff that's going on with Suave Smooth. But, but this idea we, we prefer to, project almost to different loyalties to be accepted into other groups and do these things. And then to your point, it's okay to change when you realize like, wait a second, this group of friends, this event, this lifestyle 
doesn't align with my beliefs, morals, purpose, passions. So it's okay to adjust, you know, and, and not, you can reflect back on old times and realize like, hey, I was here and this is where, I, this is where I'm at now, better or worse. You should never feel bad about it because it kind of made you who you are. You went through those experiences to get you to be your authentic self now. You know, when you talk about addiction, a lot of times from people I've talked to with addictions and stuff, it's, they have this almost guilt with it. Initially, you have this like huge guilt and grief because you're like, yeah, I, I either wasted so much of time in my life here. I, I hurt people. I did whatever. And then it gets to a point where it's like, no, this, this is my story and it's meant to help other people. And then that's when you turn it, you, you're again, being loyal to yourself, understanding that your, your story now has a purpose. You can help someone kind of continue on that may be going through that same journey you went to, went through. And you take your power back by doing that. Uh, you stop letting outside sources control you. When you, when the things that you think are the most shameful and embarrassing, if you're willing to put those things out there and get ahead of it, then, I mean, you you really are taking your power back and and being able to kind of own it and still go out there and be able to do the things that you need to do. Uh, yeah, if you get wrapped up in that, you become like Washington. Or nothing it's done. And just fighting about nonsense. Yeah, just fighting fighting for fighting's sake. I mean, it's the same concept of just the I fuck I'm losing my mind today. Maybe I haven't eaten enough today. Well that's that's relationship therapy one oh one. Like fighting about fighting is relationship therapy one oh one. And like don't fight about fighting. You're like, what does that even mean? And then you realize it when you start doing it that you're fighting about fighting. <laughs> And then you think, okay, well, we should probably get back to the issues because this is not productive, you know? Right. Then it turns into like the same fight that you have just like on the back burner. Mm. So like pull it out and you're like, all right, autopilot fight. Yeah. Perfect. We needed a fight and I didn't have one lined up. So we're going to go back to the archives. Yep. Um, I mean, yeah, that, that idea is interesting too, because we have this, we can get so caught up mm. in that identity where like, like, oh, no, I'll fight someone. Like, if someone, like, when people look at, like, oh, yeah. a Mets tattoo, and they're like, oh, you're a Yankees fan? Like, I, I, for the longest time, I just wanted to punch people. Just punch them right in the face. Be like, no, moron. That's not how this game works. But then you start realizing that, like, hey, I'm the moron that has a sports team tattooed on the back of his arm. For what reason? Yes, I, I like baseball. And this is a specific team that I associate with, but you're like, I spent money and had someone put ink into my skin for a sports team. Like, and again, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it, with your loyalties again, from a loyalty to you. But for me, I was just like, wait a second, that doesn't align with anything. Like, that's not. That's not my identity. I don't hold myself to that. You know, if I watched every single game and you know was from New York, maybe that would even help. But it's it's this. Oh, idea. I didn't even realize you weren't even that big of a fan. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. But you know, it. it so I was it, like, I have a Batman tattoo, but like, I'm still pretty loyal to my. Right. Well, and, and that's a good example. That's a good example. Back and forth. It's your your Batman. Huge Batman fan. If you guys. I would say I'm. I'm not going to throw out your socials. We'll harass people. They'll see it when they when they tag it on Instagram. That means you should be following me on Instagram, so you see it. But like your Batman, um, I won't call it an obsession, interest. Your Batman interest is loyalty. Yeah, your loyalty, if we will, your obedience and adherence to Batman <laughs> is. I think it's different I mean, because it's something. It's you still. You still. It's still something you're passionate about. To, to this day, obviously, it's something that means something to you. Where is like the Mets to me? It was just like it, at the time it was, and it's fine again to change your loyalties. I just now have a reminder of it, and I think this, we we probably have the same thing of like you know most people that have the uh, the old tramp stamp or whatever. I'm I'm upsetting people, so it is what it is. Uh, you know, it, that's all our generation. They know what it is. Okay. You no, know, I'm upsetting someone like talking negative about it is what I'm saying. Like, hey, you have your tramp stamp. It was either that or barbed wire on your arm if you were a dude. Like, um, 
one of the Lachey brothers? Uh, I don't know. I feel like the tribals are more on par with the tramp stamp. Like if you got tribal mm. tattoos, like, woo. That is true. <laughs> you are not from Hawaii, sir. Yeah. <laughs> that is or not a sign Bali of your people. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why don't you get a Celtic, like, crest on your ch- What? <laughs> Getting off track. Why? But this this idea of like it was it was something we did to fit in. It's what pe- other people are doing. It's what you wanted to do, and you realize like, oh wait, that's not who I align with. This is what it is, and we can go forward with it. But I think the the issue we can go back to the the old tramp stamp. Horrible name, by the way. We're degrading a lot of people for it, but that's okay. That is what that's what it's called. So there's a new one. There's a new place with a similar name. I'll think of it. Let me know because I I don't know I'm not I'm not wow. in that 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 sphere of people. Um, now I'm gonna have to look it up to myself. But we have this you <laughs> you have it as an image and as a reminder, and that reminder can act as one of two things. It can act as a disappointment, regret, and that sort of thing, or it can just remind you of another time. It can remind you of hey, that was a time in my life. Great, I had these experiences that were fantastic. I had these experiences that weren't, but. It, I am who I am now because of said experiences. And I think that's when we talk about loyalties changing, we have to do that full circle of when it changes, how do you associate, what are your, your feelings, emotions, whatever, associated with that past loyalty? I don't think it needs to be negative because it's kind of gotten you to the place you are today. True. I will say though, if you don't like it, you can always get it covered up with something, you know, crazy. <laughs> um, no, if that's what I mean. If you're not loyal to that anymore, change it. No, um, no, but kudos to you for just wearing your wearing your uh, your your star like a champion. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like when we're talking about you getting like names of ex girlfriends tattooed on you. <laughs> Like cross it out. Like what's your team now? Like the Vikings, you know. <laughs> and as you move, you're just gonna have like <laughs> it would just be that stuff. efficient just to have like um, a little like a line through every single one of them as well. Like just like not even not even like artistically done, just like a strike through. Uh, I, uh, I do the same thing for like <laughs> superheroes on my leg. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's funny. But yeah, I think it is. Go ahead. Sorry. You, I, I do think it's funny though. Like you obviously had a lot of loyalty to it to to put ink on your skin. Um, I always wonder about that. You know, like I think you have a point to your tattoos, and then so do I. And you kind of think, you know, some of those people that get tattoos should just think, why? You know, if you were not like, that's a lot to go through. If you're not loyal to what you're doing to yourself and then it kind of goes back to the fact that you'll kind of do whatever if you're not loyal to anything and be like um i just want a little star somewhere <laughs> well that's what i saw a video with uh i think it was post malone. a lot of friends that was some star and hard tattoos I, post malone had a video of like talking about his tattoos and like some of them he doesn't even remember getting but a lot of them i think it's just like he is now I, and I'm not trying to project anything on Post Malone. I don't know him, but it seems as though like that's his identity and what he associates with, and he enjoys it. So to him, if he got a Mets tattoo and then didn't like the Mets anymore, I'd be like, "That's cool." The idea of his body being a canvas for art is what where some of his loyalty is. Again, not a problem with it, just yep. not necessarily. So you're saying, uh, yeah, he's loyal to getting tattoos. <laughs> yeah, right. He's loyal to his friends, allowing them to tattoo on him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I guess let's let's wrap it up because I feel like we're getting we're going off the deep end. This is a typical Jonathan and Caitlin conversation where it's like it's good for a solid forty, and then we're just like, Pew. like so if if we kind of want to think about this like bigger picture, what are some things that you could think people should kind of maybe be aware of or some maybe tips that we can be aware of in trying to understand like where our loyalties are and kind of how we should choose those loyalties. What do you spend your day doing? I mean, that's kind of the first thing you have to look at. You might as well be honest with yourself because you can make a list of the things that you think you're loyalty to and 
I don't think that that's very honest. <laughs> uh, I think that the, I mean, you can do a week if you have to, so that you can kind of really see what you're doing and where you're going and that kind of thing. But uh, I think a lot of us would end up finding out that we're not very loyal to very much, including our friends, including our workout, including our diet, including sleep schedule, including returning, getting back to people, um, including, you know, being in full integrity with our jobs and with being who we say we're going to be. Um, like, take a good look in the mirror and don't be so afraid of what's looking back at you. I mean, it's not like it can't be changed. There's nothing written in stone. Your loyalties can certainly change and you just have to take steps to making that happen. But I think you have to at first identify where it is your loyalties are being focused and centered at the moment before you have a chance of being able to identify where you can improve or change. Couldn't said it better myself. <laughs> that's how we wrap up. Caitlin, thanks for being on the show again. It's always a pleasure talking. Of course, yeah. We'll have, we'll have Caitlin on many more times about many other random topics. So if there's anything that you think like, hey, I'd like to hear a Jonathan and Caitlin conversation about this thing, let me know. And we'll, we'll, we'll draw it up and we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll try to make sure we have our notes pulled up before we start the show. Uh, but no guarantees because this is, this is how we do things. I'm not very good with technology. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they let me paralegal. <laughs> I wouldn't say that too loud, though. They might try to take it away. I mean, I'm still really good at it. I just don't know why they let me do it. <laughs> All right. Everyone else, reach out to me, uh, social media everywhere. Flores.run. Subscribe, leave a review for the podcast. Um, Shoot us, shoot us a DM. Let us know what your loyalties are. Maybe if anything you got out of this episode, that'd be super helpful for us. But visit the website, www.flores.run. Thanks so much for joining me today. Remember to keep running with purpose, one step at a time. See you later. Bye.